Hello guys, uh, Zylon here. So, last episode we were extending our knowledge on variables and arguments. And um, I purposely did that so we could, you know, make our, our send and our receive message that we had for our red in that episode, uh, two episodes ago, um, a bit more advanced, a bit more sophisticated. It looks, you know, it, it looks cleaner with what you can do with it and it just looks so much better it makes you look like 10 times a professional if you you know if you if you try and use um arrays or tables and arguments so if i do ls here this is my sender computer so i have the original send so if we look in there that was what we had last time on our rednet episode it was very simple it, it did what it had to do and um the send you know you could just type what you wanted and say uh this is a message and that'd be it and it would keep on doing this forever and ever so let's exit out of that now our send to okay i'm not going to open it up i'm just going to run it and i'm going to show you you know what it, what it does so if i hit send to please type send to and then your message so uh hello and that's it it's just sent a message for us so this is this is um this just looks so much more advanced than than what you probably used to and it, it looks just so much better it's very easy to get your head around as well if you watched last episode it's not that long, considering um, what the other program looks like. It just has a bit more advanced terminology or coding in it that just makes it that bit better. So we have rednet.open, as is necessary with all rednet programs. You have to open your modem. Um, then we have uh, a variable called args, which of course is our argument, so it's the message that we type after we run the program. So send to and then the message. And then um, I see if they've actually put anything in there, if they put anything in args1. If they haven't, then that means that clearly they forgot to type a message. So it's going to come up with a little error message, but it's not going to come up with like a a syntax error or a line broke or something like that. It's just going to say what I personally what want the uh, program to say. So I'm going to say, please type send to, and then your message. And then um, after that, we've got, um, you know, we print off the first and second argument. Now, the second argument is just, it's just what you type after you've typed your first message. So it'd be like, send to hello and then you press space and that's your second argument when you type there so that could be anything so it could be example or uh, world and yeah it just basically lets us send two snippets of lines at a time now you can edit this with a for statement if you wanted to um, in fact I'll do one right now um, I'll just say I'll just say for i and i pairs args, um, <coughs> do, and then we just we just have to quickly do that. We can get rid of this line then, and it will print off every single argument that we've ever put in our um, program. So let's just see if we come up with any syntax errors. No. Okay. Cool. Uh, so yeah, that was that's the send. So. Nothing too fancy, well, not too fancy, but looks fancy. Yeah, no problems there, no syntax errors. You see, modem's red. So, our second program clearly will be the receive. So, ls. Now, I've got three programs here. I will explain later what example is, but right now, I'm just going to delve into, you know, receive. So, that's what we did last time, just to refresh your head. We had um, a receive that had two variables attached to it, which was the sender ID and our actual message. So, uh, it also says message from computer ID, blah, 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 and prints the message. So, 
slightly longer than the send, but it, yeah. Now, the receive to is far more complicated, far far more you know sophisticated in what what it has to do. So. Yeah, um, there's a couple of unnecessary elements in here. Um, for instance, number. That doesn't have to be there, but but it, it works. Um, it says running program. If message is xylem, it will run a program called example, and it will stop our loop. Oh god, no, I don't want to edit again. Yeah, I'm just going to make it print off what what we get sent. So receive to boom. Okay, let's try that again. Yeah, there we go. Hello world. So we didn't even actually need to type a um we didn't that's actually what I wanted to do. Um <laughs> but I didn't realise that it would actually be that smart enough to do it. So yeah it it says what we want it to do. So we can say um Since this is in a for loop and it doesn't actually have a limit on two variables, we can say this is xylem typing. Oh god. Okay, and then we can send that over and it'll say this is xylem typing. See? And it's really cool because it, yeah, it, I'm able to send over all this text with just one line of code. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty neat. Um, so that's what you can do with arrays anyway. This is just what I wanted to show was, you know, kind of trying to widen the, the potential that you can do with um, RedNet. <coughs> now, of course, it's not just limited here. Here, I, I can actually do one more thing. Um, I did say that this would be able to run a program if I typed a keyword. Now, if I type Xylem, so, yeah, if I was to type xylem, you can see immediately that it's blinking. This is the potential of RedNet. It ran a program that is not in the actual receive program. So, this is the potential of RedNet. Nowhere can you see the text, this is the potential of RedNet. You only see that line of code. An example. Print, this is the potential of RedNet. Now, what do I mean by this is the potential of RedNet? Well, let's imagine, for example, there was a big reactor or something like that, like you wanted to turn off your lights, but you didn't want to like flick a lever, you wanted, um, I don't know, like a pocket computer to, to um, turn off the lights for you if you just typed one simple thing. Well, if you could, you know, pretend that when we do send Xylem, you could put, I don't know, send lights or toggle lights it would turn on and off your lights because this doesn't just you know print text off this is able to control redstone as well so yeah you could turn off your lights with this or you could do you know clo close a big reactor if you got to that point of coding where you're able to do that but yeah that's 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 what you can do with red net and arrays they they fit very nice with each other uh, sometimes, uh, as you can see earlier this episode, there was a bit of a conundrum with uh, an array and um, me sending, well, receiving a message. And I only realised it wouldn't work because it sends it as like one whole thing. It, well, it separates it in chunks, but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to receive it as one whole thing. So yeah, it kind of converts it from a table into a string. So yeah, it, I wouldn't try and confuse you right now but yeah basically it wasn't going to work in a million years with the way I was doing it so what I did wasn't really a um, a bug it was more of a well it was a bug I, I fixed it basically at the end but yeah um, that's more advanced red net with arrays and arguments so yeah I hope you enjoyed the episode um, yeah, there's more foundation for something that you can do yourself. Like, you know, you could probably do some research on RedNet and not RedNet, um, Redstone, and see how you could export signals, you know, Redstone signals. So, yeah, that's up for your own leisure. Uh, but, yeah, this was um, advanced 
uh, Rednet. So I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please comment that you did or, or give it a like and uh, subscribe if you want to see uh, more episodes like this. Um, very soon I will be ending this series for uh, doing more advanced programming. So we won't be limited at the computer anymore. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be able to um, expand to mods and you know be able to interact with stuff that you'd usually do with mod packs. So yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, the last episode of the series will be next week on the same day. So stay tuned for that. Uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed um, this episode. So I'll see you later. Zion checking out.